So you need a solid laptop for pro work, but you're not made of money. The M4 Air looks great on paper, but then you see the MacBook Pro and wonder, am I missing out? After comparing them in store and using the Pro for over a month now, there's exactly one feature that is genuinely worth the upgrade. And no, it's not the extra performance that everybody talks about. Before we get into that, let's check out the specs on this M4 Pro MacBook Pro. This is the 14 core CPU, 20 core GPU model M4 Pro MacBook Pro, 14 inch screen, has the 16 core neural engine. For power, it comes with a 96 watt power supply in the box and features MagSafe charging. It has 24 gigabytes of RAM standard, and I opted to fit this with a one terabyte hard drive, which is an upgrade. It has the 14 inch liquid retina XDR display. This particular model has the nano texture option. I picked the silver colorway because I really like the way that the silver and black keyboard contrast with each other and I didn't want to just have another black device. I actually think the silver is easier to do video and photo of as well, so that definitely factored into my decision. The keyboard is great. It's less clackety than the Magic Keyboard that I have on the Mac Studio. It's definitely more comfortable to type on in my experience. But with those specs, is it really that much faster than a MacBook Air for everyday tasks for most people? For the price jump, you'd expect substantial performance gains, right? The raw power alone probably is incremental, but it definitely has more. I don't think that's the specific reason to upgrade necessarily. One thing you do get on the Pro over the Air is active cooling. This is where my previous MacBook Air kind of fell on its face. With the MacBook Pro, you get fans and active cooling to help keep the chip cool. Largely though, these Apple Silicon chips have proved to be extremely efficient and most people aren't ever gonna hit the thermal threshold on the MacBook Air. If you're doing heavy tasks like photo and video editing though, it can definitely be helpful to have that extra thermal headroom. And Apple recently released a commercial that I saw on YouTube called Unplugged and they tout the 24 hours of battery life on the MacBook Pro. So does it really add up? I think the answer is a resounding yes. The MacBook Pro has great battery life for me. In fact, I basically only charge it once a week. I use it at night to do YouTube scripts, to pay bills, to manage my tasks, to browse the internet almost every night. And then on Saturdays, as I record these videos, I use it to power the audio interface and record my audio. I pretty much only charge it on Saturdays. So this morning when I plugged it in, it still had about 47% battery life left. So had a great week of, of uh, battery life again on the MacBook Pro. The only reason I keep it plugged in is so it's easier to power all the peripherals while I'm recording. But at the same time, the MacBook Air is going to have great battery life as well. So the specs are solid. The keyboard's great. The battery life is really good. If you push it thermally, you have the performance headroom on the Pro over the Air. So you might be thinking it would have made sense for me to just buy the Air. Until I saw this one feature. The one feature that I actually think makes the Pro worth it. It's definitely not a money grab and it is certainly not a gimmick like I thought originally. If you're constantly on the go with your laptop, now that I've used it, I wish my iPad Pro had it as well. That one feature is the nano texture display. In the studio with an LED light, you can clearly see the difference in bloom from the light. Really bright reflections on the iPad Pro and the nano texture display on the left really cuts down on those reflections. Now, 
In the office, I sit with my back to a window. So on the left-hand side is my Apple Studio display. On my right-hand side is the window, which results in reflections and glare on the Apple Studio display when I use it. Now, generally when I'm downstairs using the iPad Pro on the couch, or now the MacBook Pro on the couch, same thing, the window is behind me. And as you're typing, those subtle movements of the screen can really cause those glares and reflections to be super distracting while you're trying to get work done. The nano textured display all but squashes that unnecessary distraction. I assume that this reduces eye fatigue and it definitely helps me to focus on the work that I'm doing and keep those distracting reflections at bay. Sure, there is a slight hit to the contrast. I think the only place you're reasonably gonna notice this is in the Apple Store itself checking out a nano texture versus a glossy screen side by side. Those screens are always on max brightness in the store. You're definitely going to notice it there. As soon as you take this thing home though, or go to use it outside or in an area with bright lights, you really do notice the difference of the glare and the distractions and all of the things that the nano texture cuts out versus the glossy screen. I almost can't even use the iPad Pro at this point. I think I'm gonna to have to go get a paper-like screen protector on it to get that sort of matte screen look that I'm going for. And then lastly, on the nano texture display, Apple says this isn't a coating. This is a treatment to the glass that they do to give it this matte look. So long-term durability might still be a question here, but the fact that it's not a coating means it shouldn't wear off over time. I don't think that Apple would have released this nano texture display option on something like the iPad Pro first if they hadn't done thorough durability testing, something that you're gonna to be touching the screen all the time or using the Apple Pencil with. I think the MacBook Pro is gonna hold up just fine over the years because you're not touching the screen. Sure, when you close it, you do get some uh, grease and some transfer from the keyboard. They include a microfiber polishing cloth specific for the nano texture display and tell you not to use any sort of liquid or cleaning solution on it. Just use the Apple polishing cloth. I've done that so far and it works pretty good. Now onto maybe the biggest deciding factor in this whole conversation is price. So with the glossy screen or the nano texture option, you still get this great display that has great color accuracy, good contrast, good brightness. Now, if you're looking at the M4 Pro MacBook Pro, like the spec that I have here, you spec it out the way I did, it would be $2,400 without the nano texture option. So to make it $2,550 to get this literal game-changing feature, it's the one thing that I actually wanted out of the whole experience, I think is a no-brainer. That $150, it seems like an expensive upgrade, but when you look at how Apple prices RAM and internal storage, it really isn't that bad. And I think the tests between nano texture and glossy really do show you the difference very clearly, how this reacts to the ability to take your laptop anywhere. Now it's certainly not gonna be for everyone, but for me, it's 100% worth it. And it would have been a really expensive mistake to buy the glossy screen, so I'm happy that I did not. Now, of course, not everybody's gonna have the budget for the MacBook Pro in the first place, so what are some other things that you might consider? Of course, we've talked about it in this video, the M4 MacBook Air is a great option. At its base price, it leaves a lot to be desired for me in terms of RAM and storage. So if you upgraded the RAM to the 32 gigabytes and upgraded the storage to one terabyte, it's still uh, cheaper than a MacBook Pro. The price goes up to about 1800 bucks, but you have a great overall laptop then that will last you a really long time. But maybe you have a desktop setup and you already have your own monitor, you don't need a laptop, you could consider the Mac Mini. You can spec out the Mac Mini with this same M4 Pro chip, bring your own display, and it's also $1,800. Now, if you don't have your own display, that becomes obviously more expensive, which is where the extra price of the MacBook Pro might make sense. Yes, the MacBook Air gets you a little bit more portability, potentially even more RAM, and the same amount of storage for a lower price, but you sacrifice all the extra ports that the MacBook Pro has, 
you get a better display, you get a slightly bigger display in the 14 inch, and crucially, you miss out on the best thing about the MacBook Pro, the nano texture display. Contrast that with the Mac Mini. Sure, you're getting the same CPU performance in the M4 Pro. It's not nearly as portable as it's a desktop. It's not designed to be. So who do I think this M4 Pro MacBook Pro is for? Well, if you value the specific combination of portability, the Pro ports, the thermals, and the superior viewing experience, then the MacBook Pro is the laptop to get. But ultimately, at this point, you can't really buy a bad Mac. It's just not possible. It's kind of like the Porsche 911. Porsche has spent years and years and years doing small iterations to the 911. And at the end of the day, if you own a 911, it's still a Porsche. Similar in the Apple lineup, anything with Apple Silicon right now is the same way. Apple is continually making these small improvements that stack up over time. So if you have the budget, definitely get the latest and greatest and best thing. It'll last you the longest period of time. But don't be afraid to look at the older generations and refurbished options if you need to save some money. And if you like this video, you can check out exactly how I ended up with the M4 Pro MacBook Pro, thanks to the help of the Apple pricing ladder. Get subscribed for more. Until next time. Later.